Over the course of 30 plus years of backpacking, I've gone through many phases of cooking gear and cooking systems. And especially in the last 15 years, I've been working on shaving weight with all of my gear as I transition from traditional to ultralight gear and methods of backpacking. Hey guys, I'm Dan from Shasta Bubba Adventures, and today I'm going to walk you through the process of how I went from a pound and a half of cooking gear all the way down to zero. That's right, on most trips I'm now carrying no weight at all for cooking gear. Now, not everybody is going to want to go as far as I have, and that's perfectly fine. It's important to do what you feel comfortable with and hike in the manner that's enjoyable for you. It's my hope that by explaining each step down in weight that I made, that you can find the sweet spot that works for your type of hiking. And I'd love to hear about that in the comment section below. Let us all know where you have landed with your cooking method and gear and why that works best for you. So this is my traditional original setup with a Lexin bowl and cup and Lexin spoon. And yes, I'm leaving out the very beginning stage when I carried the army surplus cutlery set and plate and fry pan. And this is my original backpacking stove, which I still have because as I've confessed in previous videos, I'm sentimental about the gear that took good care of me for many years. So I still have it. And I use this aluminum pot for heating water. I thought I was smart and lightweight at the time because the cup and bowl and spoon were all plastic versus metal, and I was willing to forego a dinner plate. For breakfast, I would heat the water in the pot and have oatmeal in the bowl and coffee in the cup. Now at dinner time, the freeze-dried meal would be reconstituted in its package, then dished into the bowl. I believe it was in 2003 that I bought my first jet boil, and that really started the process of changing everything. The jet boil replaced my old inefficient stove and eliminated the need for an aluminum pot and with the French press accessory, it also introduced the possibility of really good coffee on the trail. It also was lightning fast in boiling water, but even though those were attractive improvements, the reality is that overall that shift actually only saved a few ounces from the old kit. Now about the same time, the big company makers of freeze-dried meals were improving the packaging with Ziploc closures, and it dawned on me that I could just eat straight out of the pouch, which meant I no longer needed the bowl for dinner. For breakfast, I'd use the cup at the base of the jet boil for oatmeal, and I learned to drink coffee straight from the jet boil cup, being careful not to be too greedy so as not to take the final sips and get a mouthful of grounds. The biggest drawbacks of this system for me were that a jet boil is still relatively heavy and I always felt a little guilty about broadcasting the coffee grounds on the edge of camp. The coffee grounds are biodegradable, but still it made a mess and that just didn't seem right. Also when rinsing out the cup and the French press attachment, inevitably some grounds ended up in the lake or stream and that doesn't degrade in that cold mountain water. Then I learned about freezer bag cooking, which means pouring boiling water in a Ziploc bag and it won't melt. So freeze dried meals or simply homemade meals that have been dehydrated could be reconstituted in the Ziploc. And I could also repackage my instant oatmeal in a Ziploc, which meant getting rid of the cup for breakfast. I also switched out the Lexan spoon to a titanium spoon for really no weight savings at all, but mainly for the long handle, which was needed to get to the bottom of the Ziploc bag. That shift also introduced the Reflectix Cozy to my kit to keep the meals warm while reconstituting. So probably again, minimal weight savings going from the company packaging and a cup to a Ziploc bag and a Cozy. But by far the biggest advantage of the freezer bag cooking for me is no cleanup. When I was done eating, I could just close up the Ziploc, stash it in my garbage bag, and the only thing dirty was the spoon, and that be, could be cleaned with just a few drops of water far away from water sources. The bigger weight savings came when I began using an alcohol stove setup, which meant leaving the jet boil home and replacing it with a simple titanium pot, and the one I use is the Tokes 550 milliliter. That switch shaved a whopping 10 ounces, but it also meant no more great coffee. On the upside, it also meant no more coffee grounds to deal with, and that trade-off was worth it for me. 
I experimented with various brands of instant coffee and finally found one that I liked, which is the Mount Hagen Instant. So for breakfast, I would just heat water in the Tokes pot, pour a little into the Ziploc bag for the oatmeal, and then just use the pot as my coffee cup. Now I'll spare you the whole story of my experiences with alcohol stoves because I told that in another video, and I'll put a link to that one up here if you're interested. But one night I made the mistake of storing my lighter in the same sil nylon bag as the stove, which was then hung up in the tree with my bear bag. And it rained that night and my lighter got wet, so it wouldn't light the stove in the morning. No problem, I thought. I'll just whip out that handy fire starter sparker I've carried forever and never used. Well, it turns out I wasn't able to get the sparker to light the alcohol stove. I believe you really need a sustained flame to accomplish that. And I considered gathering tinder and lighting the tinder with the sparker and then using the tinder to light the stove, but I was kind of in a hurry to get on the trail that morning, so instead I just ate a granola bar and drank my coffee cold. Now, that accident was a breakthrough because it forced me to realize that I really didn't have to have a warm breakfast. It worked just fine to eat a Cliff Bar, and it turns out I actually like cold coffee. So. I just mix up the coffee with a couple of raw sugar cubes in my water bottle, so no need for a cup. Best of all, by eating a cold breakfast, I was able to get packed up and hit the trail much more quickly than before. Meanwhile, I was also learning that I didn't really have much of an appetite for freeze-dried meals on the first night out, and preferred bringing along something fresh like a tortilla and peanut butter and jelly, or summer sausage and cheese and crackers. That meant that for overnight trips, I didn't really need a stove at all because I would eat fresh food at night and a cold breakfast in the morning. Thus, no stove, no pot, and <laughs> not even the long-handled spoon. So that's how I got to the point of backpacking with no cooking gear at all for overnight trips. And I've even moved to backpacking that way on two night trips with no problems. Now, I should probably mention that this works for me because I'm the type of hiker who is more focused on moving down the trail versus enjoying time in camp. And there's no judgment about that. If you're someone who really looks forward to taking your time in camp and, you know, reveling over a tasty meal, that's perfectly fine. I enjoy taking time over a good dinner too in my home life, but there's something about when I'm hiking, I view food more as simply a necessity to fuel the vehicle of my body. And the less time spent on it, the better, so that I can get more miles down the trail before bedtime. Last year, I experimented on a four-night trip with just cold breakfasts, and that worked great too. Although I did bring along a stove and the titanium pot, the stove was the MSR Pocket Rocket, and a couple of freeze-dry meals just in case to eat for two of the dinners. So the next step for me, well, logically, will be to try cold soaking, which has become popular enough with people now that you can find lots of recipes online for cold soak meals. Now that means reintroducing a tiny bit of cooking gear weight with this Talenti jar to hold the meal while it's reconstituting and, of course, the spoon. But uh, the fresh food weighs more than dried, so the weight of the jar and the spoon will easily be offset by lighter food. But that will only be for trips of three nights or more, so for most of my outings, I'll keep on carrying zero weight and cooking gear and loving the simplicity of not cooking at all. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.